The capital city of Georgia, Tbilisi, has a problem with traffic. According to the outlet Chai Hana, the average time waiting for a bus is 18 minutes, and 40% of trips are done with public transportation. One resident of a suburb outside of Tbilisi said that they can leave their house at 7 a.m. and not be back until 10 p.m. due to the dysfunction of the bus network. Tbilisi didn't used to be like this. There used to be a tram network in addition to the metro and bus services. What was it? What happened to it? And how can the traffic situation possibly be improved today? People seem to enjoy when I talk about esoteric or underknown transit projects, and while the research is difficult, I like putting these together. My name is Imre, and you're watching Uniquely Unseen, where I talk about mostly urban planning. If you enjoyed today's piece, leave a comment down below and subscribe for more related content. Additionally, if you want to support my channel by giving a donation with super thanks, I would be immensely grateful. Let's get into today's topic. The Blisi tram network started off in the 1880s with a series of trams pulled by horse teams along railroad tracks, rather than having a wire suspended in the air, as you might see in North America or Western Europe. By the early 1900s, Blisi's tram system went from horse-drawn carriages to electric. The system was small to begin with, but it slowly and steadily grew over the decades. By the 1960s, Tbilisi was the capital of one of the wealthiest Soviet socialist republics. Georgia was an exporter of tea and wine and various high-value products. With this money came more investment in transportation. The tram network grew to over 50 kilometers by the 1970s. In the 80s, the system would see a height of over 100 kilometers of track with 12 lines operating across the city. Under Soviet policy, metro systems had to be built in cities of over a million in population. This happened in Minsk, it happened in Kyiv, it was going to happen in Riga, and it happened in Tbilisi in the 1960s. January 11, 1966, to be exact. By the 1980s, the Tbilisi metro was opening the Samgori and Varkeiri segments, reaching 19.3 kilometers in length. With this segment, even though it was a fifth the total length of its tram counterpart. My understanding is that Georgian officials believed the metro to be the more cost-effective and efficient way of transiting people across the capital city. Was it as efficient as a tram and trolley bus or bus service? Well, that could be debated, but certainly... With the subsidies from Moscow at the time, it was cost-effective while it lasted. Sadly, I can't give you a simple answer as to why the tram system was removed, but what I can do is provide context on some factors that may have led to its removal. The first thing that springs to mind for me is the 1990s and early 2000s. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, that meant two things. Firstly, it meant economic and political freedom, which is great, but it also meant a loss of state subsidies. A lot of the wealth Georgia generated was from exporting to a Russian-speaking market that was relatively well-off. And with the collapse of a giant country like the USSR, people did not have excess money to spend. They had to reorient their production and distribution to a Western market, which took time. At this same time, a class of people, known as oligarchs, took control of state assets, be it tea, wine, whatever the case may be, oligarchs sprung up in every industry. In 2003, the tram network had gone from 105 kilometers to only 70 kilometers, ostensibly because the public sector simply didn't have the money to upkeep that much track, let alone modernize it. 
the fact is, money was tight. Secondarily, there's a high rate of car ownership. As one of the wealthier Soviet republics, people took advantage of their wealth to buy private vehicles, seeing it as a status symbol, which they are still today. Many people in the Caucasus and former Soviet sphere really like Western cars. The more people utilize cars for daily activities, the less money there is to spend on public infrastructure like trams. I can easily see a situation where public officials believe that investing in the tram network during this time of economic uncertainty wouldn't be as effective as investments made to the metro or bus network. The traffic problem is a known issue, and there are several ways that it can be solved and is working on being solved. One of the ways is by making dedicated bus lanes, which do exist in some parts of Blisi. Another solution is to synchronize service between the bus and metro, where, as now, they are running at different times. The bus currently starts later and ends earlier. With the investment made into personnel and ordering more buses, that could change. While no doubt it's sad that the Blisi tram system no longer exists, the more important, impactful thing to me is that people are engaged and interested in seeing these public transit systems improve, both as residents and members of the local government. Blisi and Georgia at large have gone from a random ex-Soviet country to a country that is really trying to attract foreign investment, not just from Russians, but from across the world, and it's working. I think as one pillar of attracting people to not just invest, but stay in Blisi, is investing in the metro and bus system to make them world class. Sure, it might be expensive in the short term, but it will pay dividends in 10, 20 years as these systems mature. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I hope that I've shed some light on this issue and that you've learned something. If you enjoyed today's piece, you may also enjoy a video I did on the Riga Metro, which is coming up next.